Some sad news to report tonight. Rob Dusselier, the young man who has been the focus of News 4's award-winning series, Rob's Life, died last night. Rob's life came to an end around 10.30 at his home in, Rob, in Rock Island. Rob's condition had gone downhill fast in recent weeks. He spent most of his time in bed hooked to a morphine IV. Rob's father, Lorne, tells us Rob kept his sense of humor even with his doctor till the end. He told Dr. Katz, he says, uh, well, I'm ready to go. And he says, well, Rob, why don't you go? And uh, not too many hours afterwards, all the kids got to talk to him, either by phone or in, in person. And uh, he told them that he was leaving. We shot this video earlier in the week of Rob's mother, Hattie, with him at his home. Rob died peacefully in bed with friends and family at his side. Rob was lucky in some ways most AIDS patients die alone or with a health care worker. They are often abandoned by their families. A local organization that helps Quad Cityans with HIV is the AIDS Project Quad Cities. Beth Weirman is the executive director. She was also a close friend of Rob's. She joins us now live in the newsroom. Beth, thank you for joining us during what must be a very emotional day for you. It must be very difficult to meet people like Rob as part of your job and watch them die. How do you, how do you deal with it? blessing to be able to be a part of people's lives and that blessing overcomes whatever grief we might have at this point. We're looking at uh, some video of you and uh, Rob working at the old AIDS Project office one year ago this past week. How many clients do you have now? The last time we uh, did a count we had 194 clients throughout the parking lot. What are the needs of Quad Cityans with uh, HIV and how can people help? The needs are varied. We're coming into a time of year when we do a lot of fundraising. And uh, so this time of year, we particularly need volunteers. Starting May 1st, the line that has quite frequently been flashed up uh, for information will be used as a volunteer line. So uh, I'll make sure that Ken has that number and it will be advertised frequently. We do need people to come out and help us as we continue to raise funds and, and raise awareness. Now, Rob's main goal was to educate people. He did a lot, but uh, there is a lot left to be done, isn't there? There's a great deal left to be done. Um, when Ken asked me to be here today, the last thing I really wanted to do was to be on TV live. And on the other hand, I knew that Rob was telling me to be here. We'll go on with the education, and um, it just won't be quite the same, but we will go on and continue the, the quest to have people be aware and be educated. Beth Merwin, we appreciate your help during the Rob's Life series, and we want to thank you for coming tonight. Now, if you have more questions about AIDS, or if you can help the AIDS Project Quad Cities, you can call them at this number. Their telephone number is 328-5464. Once again, that number is 328-5464. Of course, our series on Rob's Life is not finished. Funeral services for Rob will be held on Tuesday, and we will cover that on News 4, and the eulogies will be the focus of this week's Rob Life's segment. That's Thursday night at 10 o'clock. Now, Rob's life began on December 31st, 1961, and ended on April 19th, 1996. He was 34 years old. I'm not really afraid to die. I, I truly believe that, that this isn't it, um, that there's something else. Um, out there that's after this. I don't know what it is, um, but sometimes it's, uh, this may sound morbid, but sometimes I, I almost look forward to that. The part that scares me the most about the dying part of it is I want to make sure there's people there to make sure my family's okay. My parents are probably two of the most wonderful people that I've ever known. They're very supportive. They're very understanding. They're just great. You know, I've talked to my brothers about uh, um, I want to be cremated after I die, and I don't want to lay around on a slab for two or three days while they, you know, while we wait for them to come and see me. Um, I would just assume when when that time comes, a few days before they come and see me while I'm still alive. To me, you know, I'd rather see them spend their money going to Disneyland than flying home, you know, to look at a box of ashes. Rob was always really good at teasing. He knew just how to instigate and then bow out and watch the action happen. And, and eventually he'd always get caught. <laughs> um, 
No, I was the perfect child growing up, the perfect brother. Uh, I'm just really glad that we're able to share, um, you know, the end of Rob's life with him. Hopefully our family isn't unique. Hopefully there's a lot of families like ours. But, you know, I think it's unique that we can all look past anything that we may not agree with, you know, um, and, I mean, he's my brother. He's, he's there whether I like him, I don't like him, he's, he's blood. He's, and that's not even it. I mean, how can you ever meet a guy like Rob and not just instantly like the guy? The way that I would want to be remembered, that people understand I did what I did the last couple of years, um, helping to open people's eyes, um, to raise people's awareness about HIV and AIDS. Um, hopefully that we got the message out there, at least somewhat, um, that, you know, it's simple to protect yourself. This is News 4 at 6 with Steve Smith, Carol Maloney's weather, and sports with Dave Rampson.